Nerve impulses are conducted along the plasma membrane of the cell. The membrane potential is the difference in the voltage between the two sides of the plasma membrane. The resting membrane potential is the difference when the neuron is at rest. The action potential is the difference when the neuron is conducting a nerve impulse. RMP tends to be positive on the outside and negative on the inside of the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is polarized. This means that it has poles, a slightly negative and slightly positive side. The average RMP is negative 70 millivolts. The type of membrane protein that, contain, that maintains RMP are the Na plus and K plus pumps. The ion sodium goes outside the cell while the ion potassium goes into the cell. Potassium tends to leak across the membrane faster than sodium. The action potential is due to changes in the electrochemical changes. Action potentials are due to voltage-gated potassium channels and voltage-gated sodium channels. Before action potential occurs, threshold has to be met. Threshold is the minimal change necessary for an action potential to occur and is equivalent to negative 55 millivolts. An all or nothing response is if it is greater than or equal to negative 55 millivolts, then there is an action potential. But if it's less than negative 55 millivolts, there is no action potential at all. So like either everything can happen or nothing, all or nothing. The three types of muscle fiber are slow twitch red, fast twitch red, and fast twitch white. Slow twitch red is oxidative, which means it primarily uses anaerobic respiration. It has a high density of mitochondria, a high resistance to fatigue, and is also known as type 1. An example of someone who would have a lot of slow twitch red is a marathon runner, because they have to run for a long time, but not for very fast. Fast twitch red is glycolytic and oxidative, but neither is as effective as the other two. It has a somewhat high density of mitochondria. It is intermediate fatigue res resistance and is also known as type 2A. An example would be a sprinter, which has to run somewhat fast and somewhat long time. So it's kind of in between the two. Fast twitch white is glycolytic which is primarily uses anaerobic respiration. It has a low density of mitochondria and a low resistance to fatigue. It's also known as type 2B. An example would be a power lifter that has to give a lot, a lot, a lot, everything he has for like one second and then just quit. Nervous tissue functional overview is first it goes through sensory then integration, then motor output. The sensory is collecting information and sending it to the central nervous system, also known as afferent neurons. The integration is in the central nervous system and it decides to do what to do with the info. The motor output is the reaction and also known as the efferent neurons and is typically a muscle of All right, first, the action potential travels along the sarcolemma down the T-tubules to the sarcoplasmic reticulum after the events at the NMJ. Next, calcium channels open so that calcium leaves the SR. Third, calcium binds to troponin. When troponin changes shape, it pulls tropomyosin away from the myosin binding site on the actin. Now, contraction can happen as long as ATP is present. Myosin heads are energized. When energized, heads are put into a cocked position and ready to bind to actin. This is due to hydrolyzing ATP, which is when ATP is turned into ADP plus P and is broken down by ATPase located in the binding pocket of the myosin head. After myosin heads are energized, cross bridge formation occurs. This is when myosin heads bind to actin. The power stroke of the myosin heads is when the myosin heads rotate. 
thus causing filaments to slide past each other. Crossbridge formation requires the binding of a new ATP molecule. Note, all myosin heads do not attach in unison. Some rest while others work. This is called walking. This shuts off by relaxation. Lowered nerve impulses closes calcium channels. Calcium that was released into the SR, I mean, calcium that was released is returned to the SR via calcium pump, which is active. So, contraction uses channels and gets calcium out of SR, but it still needs ATP, obviously, since things are moving, so it needs ATP for energy. But even relaxation needs ATP because it uses pumps to get calcium into the SR, but it needs the pumps because it's obviously against the concentration gradient, so even relaxation requires ATP.